Transfigurations. The writers and costume department go on a joint strike, demanding better working conditions. <laughs> we begin with yet another Jordy Likes a Girl subplot, and it's the same girl from the beginning of Booby Trap. You're a terrific guy. Yeah. I just don't feel that way about you. And she's the one that shows the interest. And Jordy basically just acts like a little kid. He needs to stop acting like he's 10. But Worf was actually pretty good here. I have much to teach you about women. I was hoping for a subplot where Worf would end up dating her to show Jordy how it was done. <laughs> That's such a good idea. That legitimately would have been awesome. The Enterprise picks up a crashed ship down on an unknown planet, and they find a dying survivor who is too unstable to transport. Beverly hooks up the brains of Jordy and the survivor so that Jordy's brain will control the survivor's heart. And she sticks it right on his brain. That would hurt. <laughs> Can you not put it on the other non-brain exposed side of his head? Like they did with Jordy? And then a yellow optical effect goes up into Jordy's head. Beverly's dropping a bunch of medical tech talk. Massive infection is setting in. Use the protodynoplaser to stabilize his immune system. She went more than a bit overboard, as will the rest of this episode. They're also injecting the survivor with massive quantities of blue and red. <laughs> <laughs> they determined that the crashed ship was an escape pod. They also find a container of computer jelly. Which Picard is holding for some reason. We get a whole bunch more techno babble from Data. Downloading this into our system will require fabrication of a matrix translator to emulate the alien's computer system. We find out that in Sick Bay, to pass the free time, they have some carnival games. That light thing behind them, I don't know what the hell that thing is. Beverly says the survivor's body seems to be healing at an accelerated rate. And his cells are mutating. At one point she says, I believe he's going to live. I'm afraid I can't take the credit for it though. At least she's honest about her skills. <laughs> We get more unnatural sounding techno babble between Data and Jordy as they try to figure out the ship's computer. And I like that Worf was pissed that he doesn't understand what they're talking about. Immediately. Less talk. More synthahol. Jordy seems to feel unusually good, and he even develops the courage to ask Christy out, the girl from the beginning. Mutant man, who has been designated John Doe, has regenerated enough that he can function on his own. When he thanks Beverly for his life, she doesn't contradict him. Even though... I believe he's going to live. I'm afraid I can't take the credit for it, though. He doesn't remember anything about his past, including who he is. Beverly puts bands on him to help maneuver his limbs, but she has him do it in open space. There are no support bars or anything. And apparently, it's been a month. The passage of time is not well conveyed on this show. Meanwhile, Jordy progresses to the making out in the turbo lift stage with Christy. Chief O'Brien walks into sickbay, having dislocated his shoulder kayaking in the holodeck. In a very 90s colored outfit. John heals his arm just by touching it, which he seems to do instinctively. Beverly is attracted to John and is talking to Wesley about it. This scene was not really well acted or shot. Jordy finds out that the storage capsule is chemical, not mechanical, which I could have told you by looking at it. <laughs> They find a map and determine where John probably came from, but he doesn't want to go back. All I know is that we came out here to escape. The map is made up of markings next to pulsars that indicate a rotational time reference. And that was kind of cool because in real life, probes that are sent into space sometimes include diagrams that indicate the location of Earth, basically using the same directions, which is probably where they got the idea from in this episode in the first place. Beverly and John are intent forward to relax and apparently he was under the impression they were going to hit the slopes, because that's what he's dressed for. <laughs> the Enterprise picks up an unknown vessel approaching. The survivor glows yellow and spazzes out and says he must get off the ship, so he runs to the shuttle bay. The music he plays here was a little too much. <sighs> they try to stop him, and Worf, who is just spending this whole episode pissed at everything, goes to stop him. John's glow ends up knocking Worf off a catwalk and he breaks his neck. And he actually dies. But then John manages to bring Worf back to life just by touching him. But the real miracle was how he suddenly got down to that lower level in like two seconds. In Picard's ready room, he questions John, who says he needs to be isolated because he poses a danger. We've already seen that that's true, 
and no one knows what's happening to him, but for some reason they still don't try to isolate him. On cue, the alien ship shows up with weapons ready, and in a really out of place moment, Jordy stops by to thank John for somehow giving him the confidence boost he's been experiencing this episode. John replies, Perhaps I only helped you find something you already had. This doesn't actually explain anything, and then Jordy walks away and does not appear in the episode again. I found that whole subplot more interesting than the main plot, but it never resolved or went anywhere. John says that the commander of the other ship, Sunad, is dangerous, and Sunad aggressively tells them that they are trespassing and that John is an escaped prisoner who was spreading lies and disturbing the natural order of their society. The charges are stated, and really, that should be the end of it. These aliens are unknown to the Federation. They really have no place getting in the way. Which they even admit. But because they have a problem with it, they're naturally going to make things much worse. This conversation in the conference room was a terrible idea, and for me, it was the worst part of this episode. Everything the characters say directly points out why they are wrong and should not be interfering at all. Whether we approve of the Zalconians' intentions is not the issue. In their eyes, we shouldn't even be involved. It's not up to us to judge their laws, Doctor, and not let our personal feelings impede our judgment. It's not even an argument, because there are no points to be made that they're in the right. Picard keeps demanding more information from Sunad, even while stating he has no right to do so. If that is your wish, we will respect it. We simply want you to leave Zalconian space as soon as you return the criminal. We do not want relations with you. As I said, it is not your concern. Agreed. I would appreciate a more detailed explanation of what he has done. He talks about John's healing abilities, but they have no indication that that is outside the norm for his species. I like how the view screen camera conveniently zooms out for when Sunad is going to stand up. Sunad then does us all a favor and tries to kill these assholes for being f***ing idiots, but John touches the ship's wall and reverses it. John tells Beverly that he remembers who he is, and teleports Sunad over to the Enterprise. Sunad had just given the order to fire on the Enterprise, but for some reason the people on the view screen in the background don't move. And he never reverses his order, so I thought they would just continue to fire while he was on the bridge. John tells them that his species is approaching a new evolutionary change. A transmutation beyond our physical being. I am the first of my kind to approach this metamorphosis but that's not how evolution works. And the leaders of this society were trying to shut it down. John then turns into a glowing yellow version of Green Man. What the hell did I put Green Man on? No, that lizard talks! Where? Where? I don't like lizards! We don't have time for this. Frank, Frank give us a gun. gun! I can only imagine what the actors were thinking and how stupid it was to be reacting to this dude. Picard says, It is our mission to seek out life in all forms. Didn't seem that way with the aliens from a few episodes ago. Now get off my ship. And even though this huge momentous event is going on right here on the bridge, all the people in the background are so engrossed in their panels that they don't react to anything. John sends Sunet back, and the Zalconian ship leaves, and then John turns into a glowing thing, goes out into space. And then he's gone. The end. And I know I've made the joke about abrupt endings before, but it actually happens this time. This is really the end of the episode. <laughs> Transfigurations. Overall, I thought the first half of this episode was okay, but then it got way too drawn out and just felt like it went on forever, and ended up being yet another God Being episode. I didn't like how there was so much techno babble without involving any actual science, and none of it even mattered. It felt like a really weird way to fill up time, and we never found out how things ended up with Jordy, which was what I was more interested in. In the end, I didn't honestly think this was a bad episode, it was just a very underwhelming and kind of pointless one. I gave it a C. Ugh. I gave this one a D. The best part should not be the relief I feel as the entire cast is simultaneously dying. <laughs> John slowly regaining his memory just to draw things out was weak, especially with the, I know this, but I don't know why it's important. Let's give it another five minutes to extend the runtime. And that conference room discussion was the most direct instance of the crew stating why they are wrong, but trying to kind of twist it into them somehow being right. And someone realized at the end that Jordy's confidence boost had not been explained, so they haphazardly threw in a two-sentence wrap-up at the worst possible time that doesn't actually explain anything. 
If we were following the show's past trajectory, this would have been the season finale, so I'm glad we still have one more to get this awful taste out of my mouth.